Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at the Lock and Load Tactical Core Rules version 5.0. And uh, I know there's been a lot of talk online about this. There's been a lot of excitement around it. And uh, the excitement is real, guys. This is the rule book we've been wanting. And this is the rule book this system deserves. Uh, before and currently, the rules are basically broken down into two uh, separate books both modern era and World War II era have the same rule set. It's just that they're broken down into two different rules because if you buy uh, anything that's involved in the modern era, this is what you're going to get. If you get anything from World War II era, this is what you're going to get. They're essentially the same thing with some additions for different weapons and weapons platforms uh, for both eras. Uh, so like obviously helicopters were, were in modern era, they're not in World War II, things like that would be in the rules the separate rules but now all of it is in one volume so this is a great thing it really is and uh, I'm gonna freak you guys out for one second if anybody hasn't already heard this uh, it goes to 275 pages don't freak out if you are not already aware of that it is not 275 pages of, uh, of new rules or anything like that it's the same thing as it was before it's just now Everything is much more comprehensive, detailed, uh, and, and uh, fleshed out. In the past, uh, things were a little, there were some rules that were ambiguous, some rules that were not even really covered, uh, that were kind of covered on forums, or you just kind of learned. But now, everything is spelled out in here. The rules themselves go to uh, page 133. And after that, we go into, you know, narrative and things, which we'll get to. But the rules proper go to page 133. Like I said, two reasons for that. One is, look at this giant-sized font. It's 12-point font, easy to read. Maybe you young guys uh, and gals don't worry about it too much, but us older guys, you know, we do. <laughs> so it's a great thing to have, and I really appreciate that. And another thing that you may notice is colors. Everything's color-coded now with these colored hexagons based on what's in the table of contents. We're going to go here, and now we have a much greater uh, detailed, uh, greatly detailed table of contents. We've always had a table of contents, but here's a good example of what I'm talking about. Table of contents before was laid out just like this. You had two pages, and the rules go up to about page 55, 56, uh, is where you start with your uh, example of play and then you flip over and then you've got your quick brief breakdown sorry for the glare I got really bad overhead lighting here I need to get some better lighting but this is a breakdown of your counters and that was it well now not only do we have a much more detailed and easier to reference table of contents but everything is broken down by color-coded hexagons, which I talked about, uh, and look at this. We've got a much more detailed counter manifest that explains every bit of the counters. You have your MMCs, your half squads, crews. You flip it over, now we've got your SMCs, armor leaders, scouts, and what each piece of each counter stands for. Detailed very detailed on the vehicles, which is something that everybody has, you know, you you play the game as you're learning it, you're flipping through the orbital cone. What does this mean? What does that mean? What does this do? Oh, yeah, this is my front uh, armor value. This is my flank. This is my rear armor value. It becomes intuitive as you know it, but as you're, even if you don't play for a little while, you're still going to reference it. Now, you can just flip this open and have it open. Boom, it's right there. You don't have to worry about it. It's much more um, detailed easier to understand uh, and this is great especially for new gamers because we want new players to come into the system any system that we like not just lock and low tactical but any game that we as war gamers like we want more people into it and the best way to get people into those war games so we have more opponents to play with is more comprehensive better written rules and this i, I cannot sing the praises of the praises of this rule book highly enough. This is uh, so well done. The guys did such a great job on this. I'm very impressed and very pleased that the system that I enjoy so much is actually going to get 
a, a rule book that is equal to its uh, enjoyability, how much I've, I've had fun with it. Um, the other change that you're going to see, which also adds to the page count, is there's some, the blue text, there's new additions as far as explanations goes. And speaking of explanations, we're going to go to one of the hottest topics there is, which is line of sight and spotting. Now, I'm not even going by page count, I'm going by these colored hexagons up top, and I know it's white. And it even hits it on the developer's note here, which these are sprinkled throughout the book, and they're really good little call-outs that explain um, the design decisions, not just in the rules, but also in the rule book, and just little notes that are put in there. This one explains that, you know, no rule or mechanic has confused new players or spark debate more than spotting but is a key mechanic to the LNLT system, one that drives gameplay not just from turn to turn, but from impulse to impulse. It explains all of why it's so important to break this down. And everything is now broken down in bulleted format, not just line of sight and spotting, but everything else as well. Anything that, need, that you need to follow steps on, it's all broken down in bulleted points, which really is so helpful and it makes it so much easier to understand rather than just written out in paragraph format, which can sometimes, not sometimes, it, it really does get harder to find. Uh, and on top of that, examples. Just for Melee alone, we've got five right here and another four on the second page uh, of the two pages I was looking at. Nine examples for Melee Combat. And let's get back here to line of sight. Once you go through learning how spotting works, uh, spotting is an integral part of the game because, you know, as war gamers, we're used to perfect information on the on the table. We're looking at counters. We know what it is. We can even inspect the counters. We can inspect stacks. But in real world, combat is very chaotic. It is uh, there's the fog of war aspect that is always bandied about that term. In combat, you don't know what you're facing. You don't know exactly where they're at who you're facing, what the weaponry is, things like that. Even with, like today, we have ISRs overhead, given information to troops on the ground, you're still not getting perfect information like we do in games. So spotting is part of that. If, you know, it kind of tries to model that, hey, I know there's, even though you can see something in hex 1231 physically, your guys on the, on the board can't see it. So it explains how the spotting process works and also how buildings hills. Then you go into the figuring line of sight. Let's, uh, just for buildings right there, we've got three examples. Getting in a line of sight, which is always the most difficult uh, part of a tactical system for people to get their head around is partially because each system kind of handles it slightly different. The other is because it, you're taking a 3D environment and you're flattening it down to 2D, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around and visualize um, how that all works. Once you get it though, it clicks and it makes sense. To help that process of getting it, of, of everyone getting it and having the click, not only is it very well detailed, the explanation, or the explanation is very well detailed, but also look at all these examples. And then visually, they're giving you illustrated examples, not just text examples, but visual illustrations as well. Flip over to the next page. Here's a whole bunch more. Let's continue on. Another page, we've got more examples, more visual explanations with images. It finishes out for LOS at 15 examples. 15 examples to help you learn what is a troublesome aspect uh, of the game for many people. And then we get into the terrain aspects of the game, of line of sight, and it has more details there. Uh, and then it breaks down all the different types of terrain that you can have, even things that are in uh, some of the modules, or the modules themselves are in there, like roadblocks, craters, fire, rooftops. All of this is covered in this rulebook. Caves, all of this. You don't have to worry about hunting through, hey, I saw that in a module rule somewhere. Nope, it's all now in the same system rule. So it, it's all in one volume. No more hunting for it, no more trying to remember what it was, where you saw it. It's all right here. And that is a fantastic addition, and I'm really really appreciative of, of the work that went in uh, to get all of this together. So now we get into the skills, 
marksmen, pipers, you can get bagpipers, that's awesome. Uh, and then get into ordnance. Ordnance is broken down. All this blue text is all new stuff. Not new rules, but new explanations. The intent of this of this manual is to be comprehensive and detailed. And that's two words that really, I think, define this manual the best. They're, it's very comprehensive. It's very detailed. Uh, making it easier for seasoned players to reference things and to even understand things that maybe we didn't before and most importantly get new players into the system and handhold them through everything and walk them through learning how to play the system and have a lot of fun with it. So let's get past all this. Now you see like I was talking about the the big text and then adding in all of these additional things that were in module rules and then the, the a bunch of explanations, a bunch of examples. Now we're going to get back here to the end of the rules proper, which uh, uh, start, uh, stops on page 133. After that, we get into the series resources, the video boot camp, and the audiobook. There's going to be an audiobook version of the rules, and there's also going to be a video boot camp, which is already in place. Most of it is already in place, and, and uh, that's continuing to be added on a regular basis. Uh, Nate is handling that, the Gimpy Gamer. He's going to be continuing that until it's all thoroughly done and it breaks down every rule in visual format so that way you can just sit down and watch it and, and have them explain it to you. Uh, a great, great thing. And, and this, between the um, video tutorial, the audiobook, and then this really comprehensive rule book, I think uh, proves what David Heath at Lock and Load Publishing said he wants to do. He wants to have the best supported tackle game on the market and this manual proves that that is definitely the intent of Lock and Load Publishing, and I think they've knocked it out of the park. Uh, we have X-Maps, Battle Generators, Lock and Load Solo, uh, Vassal, <clears throat> the Compendiums, and Battle Gear, which is new tokens and things to add a little bit of spice to your tabletop. Let me pause here for a second and get a drink. My allergies have been kicking in lately, <clears throat> so I apologize if my throat sounds a little rough. Now, here's a really interesting thing. I kind of pointed out this before. We go to example of play, basic infantry combat. All right, it starts on page 56, and the basic armored combat starts on page 60. So you have four, three, three and a half, four pages of, of basic infantry combat and several more pages of armored combat. Well, the infantry uh, narrative starts on page 136, and instead of looking through it, I'm going to show you here in the table of contents how far it goes. The infantry narrative starts on page 136 and it continues on to 182, which is when the vehicle and ordinance uh, narrative kicks in. That's like 46 pages, right? And then outline of play starts on 210 and this is 182, so you're talking 28 pages. You've got like 70 some on pages of two narratives that in this rule book were handled in like seven. So 10 times the detail in the narrative. And I mean detail. This thing breaks it down as if someone was sitting across from you explaining everything. It talks about the map and it goes into detail about the map and how to read the different hexes, the different types of terrain on the map. It goes into the player aid card and then it goes into the counters and explains all of the different things about the counters, the weapons teams, the single man counters, the leadership rating, how all of this works together, the armor leaders, fortifications, obstacles, all of this is explained to you, the administrative markers. Then we get into the scenario itself where it's broken down, the orders of battle are given to you for the Americans and the Germans and then the SSR and the rules, the, the layout of the scenario itself, what what's the wind conditions are. and. Then we go into the really detailed narrative, explaining to you everything that's going to happen. Excuse me, turn one rally phase, it walks you through it as if, like I said before, someone is sitting there across from you at a demo at a convention and walking you through everything with no time constraints. You know, a lot of demos, people try to crank out a demo in 20 minutes because people are short on time. They just want to, hey, let me get a feel for how it works. Well, this is going to be like that, but much more detailed. 
and it's just fantastic, including visual examples as it explains all of the rules, again, to you when you're walking through it. Um, and then the same for the ordinance and the vehicle um, example of play. And, whoops, now we go to the cards that come with the game as well. Player aids are all in here as well as in your books themselves. You can put this is in the rule book for reference. So that way, you know, if you have if you only have one copy of the uh, player aid card, you can give it to your buddy while you have this open on the table. This is a great new addition. This is the melee odd support table. Not that the math is hard, but it's easy to just be able to look up now and cross-reference everything and know what the odds are. You're, you know what your attacker firepower is, you know what your defending firepower is, you cross-reference them, those are your odds. Can't get any simpler than that. It's really not hard to begin with, but that makes it even easier. Uh, we continue on with all the player aid cards. And then another awesome piece, now a really detailed index. And I really love how this works out because not only do you have everything, every page for everything, laid out in the rule book, bunkers for example. It tells you where it starts, page 119, bunkers, but it also gives us a case, 21.1. Then we go down further, uh, same, same again, 21.1 for bunkers and spotting. But down here, mortars when it, when it relates to bunkers, 18.1. Uh, and then you've got overruns, 15.3. You can just, and it tells you the pages. So you can go to the pages, you know exactly which case it is, and you can understand where, or you can find easily where bunkers are in relation to each of these different things that you're looking for. And it just continues on. Just a whole bunch of awesomeness here in this book. This is just a, a, a fantastic uh, rule manual. Um, I'm just really pleased with how it came out. And the other really cool part is, in the back, you've got the four scenarios, player aid cards, the turn record tracks, and the text for the book, what's in the starter kit. The coolest part about this is we get one, two manual, or two, two um, scenarios. One of them is an existing scenario, one of them is new. So we're going to get one new for World War II, one new for Modern, which is Vietnam, that we, have, that we don't have, we hadn't had before, and that's going to be all new. The counters are also in here in case for some reason you don't have the game uh, yet, you don't have uh, a copy of the counters you need, you can always just copy this, you can put it on sticker paper, make your own if you want, or you just buy or download the um, starter kit from the Lock and Load site. So 275 pages, uh, that's what it's listed as, but you see now why it's 275 pages. Big, huge 12-point font, tons of examples, tons of explanations, uh, just really comprehensive and detailed, uh, exhaustive look at the system. And if you don't have this manual, you're going to want this manual. And here's a little bonus. We've got something special here. Heroes of Normandy, the untold stories. Uh, from the Heroes of Normandy game in the Lock and Load Tactical System, this is volume one, and I know Lock and Load wants to do more of these. These are short stories that are based on characters in the game Heroes of Normandy. And these are just made, you know, stories made up specifically for this book. And uh, the production value is just top quality. It just really looks great. And great little read. Uh, these stories are, are really enjoyable. It's not a, a really huge, gigantic book. Hey, there's Dave Heath, his, him and his smiling face. And we have the authors of the uh, manual, or, or, or the uh, book. 163 pages, great little quick quick read if you're on a plane flight or something, carry it with you, enjoyable. Best part about it, a couple new maps. We've got eight new scenarios that are gonna come out in support of this as well, so you can get the book. You can also get uh, the scenarios and the maps and play out using the counters from Heroes of Normandy to have even more goodness out of that box. And there's tons of it already to begin with. 
I think that pretty much covers everything for lock and load tactical. Um, I'm not going to go into a gigantic in-depth overview of the rules or anything like that, obviously. There is more resources for that out there. Like I said, the audiobook's coming. Uh, this will be available for download uh, on Wednesday, I think is the target date. And uh, if you're a fan of Lock and Load Tactical uh, and you have any of the LNLT games, you're going to want this. Uh, whether you purchase it or you download it, you're going to want it for sure. And if you're new to the system, you're going to want the, to use this as well. Now, it doesn't supersede 4.1 as far as like, you know, it's not like, hey, my existing rules are no good. No, they're good. Go play them. Use them. But if you are having any doubts on any rules or any, if you're not sure about the system, that's what this is for, is to explain it in greater detail and leave, uh, remove any ambiguity that was there before. And I think Lock and Load has done a great job with that here. Uh, they've knocked this one out of the park, and this is a fantastic rule set. Uh, one of the best, if not the best manuals I've ever read. Uh, so, till next time, take care, guys, and enjoy gaming. I'll see you next time.